the first things first is we need to cure our foie gras chunks uh, for the torsion. Um, the curing is the tossing in sugar and salt, which helps preserve. We'll then roll it up, tie it tight, let it sit for a day, and uh, then we'll poach it, cook it, slice it, and we can eat it chilled. Um, so first thing is the cure. It is a ratio of six parts, two parts, one part, one part. Um, six salt, two sugar, one pink salt. This adds to the cure. Um, 6.25% sodium nitrite and some other, looks like, uh, they, they, they make it pink so you don't confuse it with regular salt. Um, anyways, um, I'm going to just do a gram of black pepper. The recipe really calls for white pepper that has a lot to do with the traditional French thought process of white things get white pepper uh, so fish would traditionally have a white pepper on it um, chicken same thing um, but we need that ground so I'm gonna throw my black pepper in there that's a, a gram of black pepper because that's what I have I don't really like white pepper. I'm not, also not going to be too fussy about. Um, actually, I'm going to leave that in there for now. I'm not going to be too fussy about how finely ground it is. That's pretty good. There's no real monster sized chunks in there. We need an equivalent one gram of sugar. Or sorry, six grams of sugar. One gram of the pink salt. Tear that out. Tear that out. And we're gonna use 12 grams of kosher. I'm going to add that black pepper into the rest. Add the lid. Shake it all up. Next we'll uh, get that on the foie itself. So I just did the math. Um, I, this cure mix is good to go, um, but this isn't the full amount that we're going to use for the recipe. The recipe is based off of how much foie we actually have. Uh, this is 316 grams. So I'm going to turn on my scale again, make sure it's teared out. And for 316 grams, we need... 4.75 grams of cure. Careful on that because my scale tends to lag a bit. Alright. And I need um, the, the recipe calls for a blend of Madeira and white port, which I don't have either of, uh, but Alyssa has some Riesling hanging out, so I think that that should have some sweetness. Um, uh, that we need to tear out, and we need 2.5 grams to equal that recipe. So the next step is to mix it all together, toss it and coat it well, kind of break it into some smaller chunks to make sure that it cures fully.
And I'm just gonna add it to a gallon Ziploc bag. Squeeze out as much air as possible. And then we'll come, we'll come back tomorrow. All right, guys, so we are back with the magic of television. Okay, not really. It's actually the next day. So with this foie torchon, uh, special dish for Liz, today we need to just, first of all, pull out the foie gras. We need to make sure that that gets softened and then we're gonna roll it into a log uh, in about 20 minutes when that softens up. All right, so the next step in this torchon is rolling up our foie. I love that smell. Um, and we're gonna do that with some plastic around today. Uh, the torchon in French refers to the tightening and tor torquing it into a log. Torque, not to be confused with twerk. Let's make food. All right, so we're gonna start by laying out some plastic wrap. And we want this plastic to kind of stick to the countertop. That'll help give us a little bit of leverage. And uh, if I was in the restaurant with a larger roll of plastic wrap, I would have left it in one big piece. Those plastic wraps in, in restaurants are like twice the length of these ones. 18 inches or so. Um, so because I'm at home, I'm going to use two pieces. We'll just have to double it up on the second go around once we have a little bit of space. Uh, we're just going to dump the foie gras on the plastic wrap. And as you can see, now that it's sat out, it's a little bit more pliable. Uh, foie gras is fat, uh, almost all fat for that matter. Um, and it is, this is duck. Um, I'm gonna wash my hands real quick. So this is duck liver. Uh, in the very old days, it was a goose liver. Uh, but the idea here is we're trying to pack it into as tight of a roll as possible and remove as much of that air in between those chunks as possible. So this is where the plastic wrapping kind of stuck to the counter is useful. I'm, I'm actually pulling back and compressing and tightening it as I go um, and using the resistance from the countertop to my advantage. I'm going to use our trusty cake tester again too and start poking some holes in it to help that air escape. Tightening down, you can see some air holes here. This foie gras is from Hudson Valley. Um, I know there's a lot of negativity around the product um, and the govage, which is the force feeding. All right, so we have the log basically wrapped and I'm just gonna roll it away from me to help start to tighten up the edges of it. Um, the reason uh, we're going to tie these edges off with a little bit of twine, too. Uh, the reason why foie gras is uh, so controversial um, is people think that it's harmful or hurting the birds. Uh, often overlooked is um, that the ducks don't breathe and eat out of the same tubes. 
um, in their esophagus, so this doesn't actually starve them of oxygen when, when they are force fed. Uh, but for, for tying off our torsion, just gonna make sure we keep rolling it and tightening it towards the center. I'm gonna use the, my thumb to hold the twine in place. And we're just gonna wrap it inwards towards, again, towards the center. So this entire process is about creating a tight, air-free um, roulade. So anything we can do from packing it tight while we're you know, rolling it in the initial phases uh, to tying our string inwards to help keep that um, momentum towards the center um, is gonna be useful for us. Foie gras, which brings up so many absolutely opposite um, emotions. For me, it's a, an emotion of joy. Uh, Alyssa as well. Um, this dish is kind of, for her today, is an homage to a dish that we had in New York. So there's a emotional connection to, uh, to it as well. So um, that's why a, a large portion of why I'm, I'm still for it. Um, but also the rest of the duck does get used. So we're gonna do the same thing um, here. And and this, uh, please be clear, is not, I, I don't want this wall of comments to turn into a political statement or your personal beliefs on uh, the ethics of foie gras. Um, if you are against eating foie gras, just click off of this channel immediately. Here's our torchon. Um, I'm going to cut the ends off to keep it looking clean. Um, and then I'm going to go back through and roll it one more time. Um, because like I said, I didn't have as much plastic as I would like to have had down the first run through. And now that we've got uh, a torsion that is, you know, going to fit within the... Um, confines of the plastic wrap, we can do a better job tightening it down. So, again, another plastic, looks like we lost all that. Tackiness from the water, the water will hold that. It's not a lot of here, it's just ever so damp. Making foie gras torsions is not a difficult task. I know it can be kind of intimidating to somebody newer. Um, it's more of an investment in product. Uh, foie gras is expensive. It's also an investment in time. Um, although it's not a, uh, it doesn't take a lot of time um, each time you're working with the product. It, the, the investment in time is in the curing for a day and then pulling it out and then making sure it gets um, rolled correctly and then re-refrigerating it uh, we're going to make sure that it's super cold. Uh, we're going to re-refrigerate it and make sure it's super cold before we cook it. All right, so one more wrap. And I'm going to cook it a couple more times. And you can kind of see where some of that is squeezing out, there's still more air. And the fact that I can tighten that down with my fingers means that there was a little bit more air in there that we could get rid of. So again, using the tension on the countertop, I'm just gonna roll it up again. The extra plastic wrap is also gonna aid um, in the cooking process, to be uh, quite frank, as much as that might sound like an oxymoron. Uh, the extra plastic will help keep it from melting too much when we go to actually cook it. So I'm going to cut the plastic and then roll it up the rest of the way. Um, again, we're going to tie... Uh, inwards towards the center when you get relief. Do a few of these in your day, you can kind of swing it around. Get 
pretty good at it. And this whole time we're trying to be cognizant of getting that air out. So, and always wrapping towards the center. All right, so our next step is gonna be cooking. Uh, and I'm gonna do that with my Joule immersion circulator, but it is uh, 10 after two in the afternoon, which means Alyssa will be home from work sooner rather than later. Um, and since we need this to be as cold as possible before we start to cook it, we're just gonna wait until tomorrow since it's a little secret dish. Oh, and before I completely finish cleaning up, a good sign that I did a good job is the bounce test. All right, so the jewel just gave me an alert. It said we're at 127. So let's get this co foie cooking. Again, reminder, we want this to be as cold as possible. So I took that straight from the refrigerator and we're gonna go straight to the water. Um, that said, I also have water bath, cold water set to go for whenever our seven minute timer is up. So we're just gonna drop that in and come back in seven minutes. Seven minutes have passed, we're back. Grab that from the water. And we're gonna put that in our ice water and make sure it gets cold as quick as possible. Liz, you hungry? Oh my god, what? <laughs> Waffles. What is that? Waffles. Amazing. Amazing. You were you talking to me. love me. Yeah, you were talking the other day about that, uh, that other foie dish that we had in New York. Yes. And so this kind of came to my mind. Cinnamon roll with foie. Yeah, I went, I, it's not cinnamon roll, but I went with the breakfast idea. Oh uh, anyways, keto waffles and some foie torchon. Oh my God. Is this my my life? It's not real. Amazing. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I think foie gras torchon should be a thing that everybody knows how to make. This is heaven. I think I should also take smaller bites. Mm -hmm. So it's not gone so quick. been making the torsion over the last couple days. You did? Mm-hmm. I didn't know that. 
You were making this yourself? Mm-hmm. Why didn't you tell me? Because this was a surprise. And there's enough oh food in the refrigerator that I was able to hide it pretty well. Oh my god. Mm. Ooh, yes. Mm. <laughs> I love you. I love you. It's really easy to make. Um, time, not time consuming, active. It's all like passive time. Mm -hmm. Like curing the foie and then you're know, making sure it's solid enough to cook and then re chilling it. And Were so you it takes filming days. cooking the foie? Mm hmm. Oh, so this was real sneaky. Real sneaky. Really, really sneaky. Mm -hmm. Oh my god. So. Amazing. Crap. Hmm. You were in view, just not amazingly. Using my phone to control the GoPro. This is a Top Chef dish. Mm hmm. Speaking of, you want to watch Top Chef? Yeah. Alright, guys. It's enough out of us. I'm guessing this is five dopes. Five and a half, ten, twenty dopes. Ooh. <laughs> I love it. Remember um, when we were first dating, you were texting me that you were going out for liver? Mm hmm. And you said, come eat liver with me. And I said, that's by far the sexiest thing a woman's ever said to me. <laughs> you said that's when you fell in love with me. Mm -hmm. All right, that was the moment. <laughs> All right, guys. Like, subscribe, share. Peace.